This week we're gonna talk about ISO. We have another sort of technical episode. Adorama TV presents Exploring Photography with Mark Wallace. Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of Exploring Photography right here on Adorama TV. It's brought to you by Adorama. They're the best photography store in the world. Check them out at adorama.com. Well, we have been diving into the exposure triangle for the last few episodes. Last week, we had sort of a technical episode about aperture values. And this week, we have another sort of technical episode. Now, we have already covered the aperture and understanding how it opens and closes to let in more or less light and shutter speeds, how they go faster and slower to let in more and less light and control our motion blur and all the motion stuff. This week, we're gonna talk about ISO. Now this isn't gonna be specifically about how ISO works. I just did a video about that not too long ago. So if you don't know how ISO works, make sure you check that video out. It's got a really cool cartoon about light bulbs and all kinds of stuff. So watch that first if you're not really uh, familiar with ISO and the basic functionality. What we're gonna talk about in this episode is auto ISO and how that relates to the exposure triangle. Now, uh, in the past few episodes, we've been talking about controlling our focus using our aperture and controlling motion using our shutter speeds, but sometimes you sort of have to control both and you're in this dilemma of what should I do? I want my aperture to be small enough to have enough depth of field and I want my shutter fast enough that I'm not getting motion blur from hand holding my camera, but I just can't get there because when I put my camera, let's say to F8, I can't get my shutter speed up high enough to overcome the motion blur. Well, what we need to do is increase our ISO to make our camera a little bit more sensitive to light and to get that shutter speed a little bit higher. But sometimes we've got shifting light and we're out shooting around and we want our camera to do that automatically. Well, luckily for everyone, we have something called auto ISO and it's sort of magic. And what we can do is we can actually put our camera in manual mode and we can set our aperture to whatever aperture value we want for depth of field. And then we can go in and we can sh set our shutter to whatever shutter speed that we want and then let our camera determine the correct ISO. Now this isn't always going to work. So don't just go and say, hey, Mark, you told me I could do anything and it would work. It won't always work. If you have really low light and you're trying to shoot at F16 in a 2000th of a second, that's not going to work. There's not enough light. Um, or if you're shooting wide open, it may be 1.4 at 30 seconds. That's not going to work either. So bear with me here. It's not going to work for everything, but in most most scenarios, auto ISO is going to help you out with you being able to say, hey, I want to shoot at an aperture value of maybe 5.6 with a shutter speed, let's say, of, I don't know, 200. In that scenario, it should work in light sort of like this. And if the clouds go away, we have sort of a cloudy sky here today, if those clouds go away and we get more light, well, our ISO is going to take a dive. And if it gets sort of dark and we get storm clouds, the ISO will increase. And it's going to give us a lot of freedom. Now, there are some gotchas when using auto ISO and I need to explain all of those. With auto ISO, let me go through how it works in different modes. So if you're in aperture priority mode, in other words, you're setting your camera's aperture and you're setting your camera's ISO normally and the camera is figuring out the shutter speed, what happens is this. You'll set your camera's aperture and then the ISO is going to stay low as long as your shutter speed is high. And let's say the 400, 800th of a second, 200th of a second. But as soon as it starts to drop down into the 30th of a second, 15th of a second area, that ISO is going to start jumping up. Now on some cameras, what you can do is you can go into the menu setting and you can tell your camera, hey, in auto ISO, I want the ISO to kick up anytime the shutter speed hits, let's say a 30th of a second or a 60th of a second, you can tell your camera what the slowest shutter speed that you want to use is. That's really nice because it sort of gives you some insurance to protect you against camera shake. Now the gotcha with that is sometimes your ISO is gonna shoot way too high and you're gonna get noisy images. You don't want that. The other thing that you can do with your auto ISO is you can say, I don't want the auto ISO to ever kick the ISO over a certain level. So you can set up these parameters. You can say, hey, kick in when my shutter speed is at a 30th of a second, start going up, but don't ever go over ISO 800 or 1600. So you can set some parameters and if the camera can't figure things out, it'll warn you and say, that's not working. So in aperture priority mode, you set the aperture 
the camera is always going to try to keep the shutter to a nice level by automatically increasing the ISO. That's awesome. Now in shutter priority mode, in other words, you set the camera's shutter speed and the camera figures out the aperture, I don't recommend using auto ISO. And this is the reason why. What's going to happen is you're going to set your camera's shutter speed, let's say, to 125th of a second or 60th of a second. And in low light, the camera is going to instantly open the aperture as wide as possible every time if you're in low light. This is going to open it up. And it's going to open it before it starts to increase the ISO. And what that means is you're always going to have shallow depth of field and you may not want that. So if you want to have some depth of field that's nice and sharp and a fast shutter speed, that is not going to work for you. What I do recommend, and the mode I recommend using auto ISO in, is full manual mode. So you put your shutter to whatever you want it to be, 60th of a second or 125th of a second. Generally, you're going to be using lower, slower shutter speeds because if you have lots of light, you'll just keep your ISO set to a low value. And then you'll be setting your aperture to something like f5.6 or f8, somewhere in that vicinity. And then what the camera is going to do is it's just going to be increasing the ISO to try to keep those uh, settings to work in the exposure triangle. And that's awesome specifically since you can set the upper limit and you can say never go over this certain value and that's going to make sure everything stays safe. And if the camera can't do that, well, it's going to give you a little warning in the viewfinder. Auto ISO is awesome and I recommend that you try it in all three modes, aperture priority mode, shutter priority mode, and in full manual mode and see how it works for your camera. The other thing that you really need to do before using auto ISO is to do some tests. You need to take your camera, set it on a tripod, shoot something uh, that is dark or late at night and do some tests. ISO 100, 200, 400, 800, 1600, all the way up the scale and then look and see at what value is your upper limit. Is your camera not looking so good at an ISO of 800 or 1600? If so, then when you're setting the upper limit of your auto ISO, you know where to set that. And so you should do that first and figure out what the best setting is for your camera. Now, another caveat to this is all cameras work a little bit differently. Some older cameras don't have auto ISO. Some cameras, the auto ISO works a little bit differently than how I described that to you. There are hundreds of cameras out there. And so what you should do to make sure you know exactly what your auto ISO is doing is to read the manual. I know you hate it when I say that, but do that. Read the manual to see exactly what your auto ISO is doing because just because it works that way with my camera doesn't mean it works that way with your camera and Nikon and Canon and Sony and Fujifilm and all those different cameras have a little bit different flavors of their auto ISO. But there you have it. Auto ISO is a friend that will help you get great pictures without having to do a lot of adjustments. Well, thank you so much for joining me in this episode of Exploring Photography. Don't forget that Adorama TV is absolutely free. So click the link and subscribe today. And also, don't forget to check out the Adorama Learning Center. It's also free. And it's got tons of information about ISO and auto ISO and manual focus and manual mode and all those kinds of things and a link to the video I mentioned before all about ISO. So check that out. Thanks again for joining me and I will see you again next time. Do you want great looking prints at low cost? Be sure to visit our easy to use online printing service. Adorama Pix has professionals who treat your images with the utmost care that you can count on. For a quick turnaround on photos, cards, or albums, use adoramapix.com.